Hi everyone, it's Atia. I'm here again with another video. I know I've kind of fallen off the face of the earth. By the time you're watching this, hopefully my book outlet haul will be up. You know, I recorded that like three weeks ago. But yeah, my senior project happened. And I was in tech for two weeks, so that was just, it was amazing and fun. But uh, not much time to record videos or like write articles, but I'm back. Here we are. So today's video is something I'm super excited about. It is my February book haul. So many books, y'all. So many books. 23 books, to be exact. And we're just gonna do the damn thing and get through this. If you aren't already subscribed, make sure you're subscribed and join the family. Thank you very much. And yeah, the first, like, chunk of books which is most of the books look at my notes uh, it's going to be from book outlet so this isn't a book outlet haul and these are not books from my first book outlet haul which should be up already um but yeah i went back and i bought more books from book outlet so here we are because they are not expensive i will say even though i'm not going to give you exact prices like i did in my book outlet haul all of the books that i got from them are under um the total that it rounded up to be was like exactly 35 dollars and some change so that's pretty cool as well all right so first book from book outlet is going to be the blind wish by amber lau low amber lau low um and this is a basically about two sisters two sisters learn that they're half um jinn half human they're twins one of them is a representative at the human palace working to bring peace but she's no longer to be alone with her cherished prince kamal interesting and then the other sister discovers that she's the most powerful jinn in the cavern and she's thrown into special training and the strongest young men in the army are competing to be paired up with her. So yeah, basically one of them makes a wish and it goes terribly awry. And I just thought this was super cool because one, as you know, I love fantasy and I love anything that deals with like jinn and genies and things like that. There's a little lamp on the cover. And also, isn't this just like a super cool cover, don't you think? I think it's super cool. But yeah, that's one of the first books I have from Book Outlet. Second one is Acid by Emma Pass. And this reads, the year is 2113. Acid, the most brutal police force in history, rule supreme. No throwaway comment or whispered dissent goes unnoticed or unpunished. And it was Acid agents who locked Jenna Strong away for life for horrendous crimes she struggles to remember. But Jenna's violent prison time has taught her how to survive by any means necessary. When a mysterious rebel group breaks her out, Jenna must stay one step ahead of Acid and uncover the truth about what happened on that terrible night two years ago. But how can she reclaim anything when she doesn't know who to trust? I'm actually super excited for this one and maybe when I'm done with the current book that I'm reading, I will, which is in this book haul, um, I'll go to this next. Next we have One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is um, a romance and it was all over booktube when I was like binging booktube. I'm still binging booktube but like you know and just like really recommended romance novel and I actually know what this one's about. Essentially there is this woman who her husband I think gets killed. She gets married and then one year later on their first wedding anniversary the husband is on assignment and his helicopter goes missing over the pacific ocean and so she presumes that he is dead and gone and it's years later she's in her 30s so they were high school sweethearts they got married um and then years later she's in her 30s and she falls in love with another dude and decides that she's going to move on with her life and then lo and behold her first husband is indeed not dead and pops back up and is like hey i'm alive Woo! and so now she's stuck between um her current does she marry again oh yes so she gets engaged that's what it is she gets engaged to the second dude and she's like do i save the second dude or do i go with my first husband who's now been found we all see what happens. Next book is Kiss Cam by Kiara London. This book is a bunch of, essentially about, I think it's three friends 
yeah, three friends that have been BFFs forever, and they co-own a vlog channel um, called We're Vlogging Here, and their subscribers or people who follow them challenge two of them to kiss on camera, and then her relationship with the person, is it a girl? Ooh, know. Yeah, her relationship with one of her best friends starts to get a little murky and things like that, and so it's just a short cute little novel that i really honestly should read because i can probably breeze through it also i just think the cover is pretty awesome next we have autumn falls by bella thorne who yes is an actress and yes was on shake it up and yes now is in famous in love which i yes do watch and she just decided that she wants to be an author and when you're rich and have money like that i guess anything's possible once I found out that she was um, releasing a book, I did want to read it because I always like seeing that crossover between people who don't write and then when they try to write, and so I'm interested in this. This is also pretty cute and pretty short. It's a basically about um, this new girl called Autumn Falls who may just get on the wrong side of the school's Queen Bee and finds out the guy she likes hangs with the mean crowd. And so she vents her feelings in a special journal and her wildest wishes start coming true. And so it's like, can the journal solve all her problems? This is just cute, you know, it's really cute. And there's a sequel and if I like this one, maybe I'll pick up the sequel, we'll see. Next we have is A Little Something Different by Sandy Hall. The premise of this book is really cool. It tells the love story of two people from 14 different perspectives. And I don't know if you ever get their perspective, but you get like, the barista in the coffee shop, you get the squirrel in the tree that they're sitting under, you get um, the bus driver, the waitress at a diner. So yeah, I'm super excited to see how that works. Just like seeing two people fall in love through the lines of 14 other people. This one is what I'm currently reading. It's called The Sweet Spot by Stephanie Ivanovich. Um, yeah, this was about a pro baseball player, Chase Walker, walks into Amanda Cole's restaurant and they fall in love I guess I don't know it's that journey and so basically he's like Prince Charming and he's super famous obviously he's a pro baseball player Amanda just doesn't have that life very quiet life and she doesn't know if she's ready to like dive into that and like have everyone photograph her I am only on page nine here we have five to one by Holly Bodger and basically this is a world where there is a lack of women and so men are now have to like I guess basically groom themselves or like have to prove that they're worthy of getting a wife in this world where women uh, are of like limited supply. Oh, it takes place in India, it's the year 2054. Yeah, so one girl doesn't want to be a wife and the boy who's forced to compete in the test to become her husband has other plans. And so I'm excited to see how this goes, if they'll end up together or if they'll both like get what they originally want and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Next is Bright Lights, Dark Nights by Stefan or Steven Amond. This one is about an interracial relationship, a girl and a boy and I like, don't want to butcher this. Um, so Walter Wilcox has never been in love. He just wants to finish high school under the radar with his two and a half friends in zero drama. And then there's Naomi Mills, an adorable, awkward harpist with the habit of saying the wrong things at the wrong time. It's inevitable that they're going to get together, but they're also on the unavoidable path to being torn apart. First love means first fights in this timely, honest, and heartbreaking story about race relations, about race and relationships by this acclaimed author. So I'm excited to deal with that because they're in high school and I just read um, The Wedding Date, which I'll get to in a second. I just read The Wedding Date and that also was about an inter interracial relationship with a black girl and a white man and, or white boy, he's like 17. <laughs> um, and in that book, they're actually like adults. So that's a very different conversation than what two teenagers would have. Next we have Future Perfect by Jen Larson. And this is about this girl who deals with her body image and weight and just what is a perfect body and what is, you know, happiness and can you be happy and not be super thin at the same time. So I'm super excited about this and I think it's an important topic and I hope it's handled correctly. Next we have After Party by Anne Radish 
Stampler. That is a long name. Um, so it says, Emma is tired of being good, always a dutiful daughter to an overprotective father. She's the antithesis of her mother, whose name her dad won't even say out loud. That's why meeting Chiffon is the best thing to happen to her and the most dangerous because Chiffon is fun and alluring and experienced and lives on the edge. In other words, she's everything Emma is not and maybe more than Emma can handle. Because as intoxicated as her secret life may be, when Emma begins to make her own decisions, Siobhan starts to unravel. It's more than just Dylan, the boy who comes between them. Their high stakes packs are spinning out of control. Elaborate lies become second nature. Loyalties and boundaries are blurred. And it all comes to a head at the infamous after party where debauchery rages and an intense and capable confrontation ends on a plummet from the rooftop. Who wouldn't want to read that after reading that synopsis, you know? Here we have All American Boys by Jason Reynolds and Brendan Kiley. This is about two boys. One is black, one is white. I forget who is captain of the football team. Okay, so there's two best friends. Rashad, are they best friends? Okay, yeah. So basically what happens is there's two kids, one's white and one black and the black kid is beat up in a grocery store and the white kid is witness to it and doesn't tell anyone what he saw even though the black kid's in the hospital okay whatever and so then the school becomes divided and they start taking sides and things like police brutality race relations racism start coming up and i think it's just going to be interesting and a lot of people have been recommending it and i think that the cover is also super cool and also the title as well next we have hold me like a breath by timmy schmidt timmy tiffany yikes tiffany schmidt and this is about a world where this um this girl is daughter of one of the three families who's kind of controlling the black market for organ and organ donors and she has a rare disease where she's super fragile and her parents are like try or her family's trying to get a cure for her and she's just not about being locked in this world and so she it like is tired of them treating her super fragile and then something happens and she's forced into new york city yeah she's forced into nyc alone and just has to like learn to live essentially then we have the female of the species by mindy mcgay Mm, McGinnis um, and this is about a girl whose sister was murdered three years ago and the killer walked free and basically Alex that's her name knows that she can't be trusted among other people and even in her small hometown and then a guy sees her and so does this other girl and so it ends up being the three of them like end up together like bound it together and yeah interesting i don't want to read too much about it but yeah i'm excited when i read the description i was like that seems really cool and really interesting it has feminist themes in it so i've heard so i'm super excited about that too so those are all the books that i got from book outlet it was 14 books most of the book haul um and now we're going to slide into books that aren't from book outlet that i paid almost full price for yeah. So the first one, I'm just gonna get this out of the way. I was in Barnes and Nobles the other day um, for two specific books, very specific books. I just wanted and knew that I needed to get before I forgot and it never happened. And then I happened to see this in the sale. Actually, my friend Chelsea, who's been featured on this channel in one of my videos, my friend Chelsea saw this book and I was like, ooh, this is cool. And it's an easy guide to American Sign Language. I have been wanting to learn sign language for forever. It's one of my bucket list goals and I just need to start building a library to learn this language because it's super important and I would like to become fluent in it one day. Also in that same trip to Barnes and Nobles, I bought this book, which is called When They Call You a Terrorist, a Black Lives Matter memoir by Patrice Con Patrice Con Colors and Asha Vandel, with a foreword by Angela Davis. And it's essentially more about Patrice than it is about the under other woman. That's what I'm getting from um the insert and so patrice is one of the women who co-founded black lives matter like the organization and the movement so it's a fairly like small book i'm probably gonna read it soon i'm super excited to read it and i just think that the title is so striking and also the the cover is also pretty cool as well next we have the wedding date which is 
what I said earlier that I just finished reading and it's about this black woman and this white dude and they um, they get stuck in an elevator and the dude <laughs> he's about to go to a wedding for his ex girlfriend who married his best friend from med school which is just an awkward situation all in itself and his date to the wedding bailed on him for some reason and so he gets stuck in the elevator with Alexa Monroe and he's like hey I know this is crazy but since you're already here and I'm here and the wedding's literally tomorrow will you be my date to this wedding and rehearsal dinner and she's like you know what whatever I don't usually do this but YOLO and so that's the beginning of their story and they talk about race and privilege and I thought it was cute and nice and also relevant and it was more than a romance novel I'm not saying that romance novels need to be more than romance novels but it was nice to read one that was more than a romance novel especially because it consisted of an interracial couple all right so now we have the cruel prince which I've been hearing a lot about cruel print oh wait pause before I forget, The Wedding Dates by Jasmine um, Gilroy. Yeah, now we can move on. All right, so Cruel Prince is by Holly Black. Fun fact about Holly Black, not about her, but about me in relation to her, is that I actually have one of her books. And I read it years ago when I was in high school. I think it's called The Black Cat or The White Cat. It's something like that. I'll find the actual title. And I loved it. And I wanted to get the sequel. And I never did. And I've been thinking about rereading it recently, except for the fact that like I packed up all my books at home because we're like Ryan! back to all my books at home so when I unpack them finally I'll hopefully read the other book that I have by her again and then like continue that series because I really found it interesting and really liked it but here's this book um and this is about Jude who when she was seven her parents were murdered and she and her two sisters were stolen away to live in the treacherous high court of fairy. Ten years later Jude wants nothing more than to belong there despite her mortality but many of the fae despise humans especially Prince Cardin the youngest and wickedest son of the high king. As Jude becomes more deeply embroiled in palace intrigues and deceptions she discovers her own capacity for trickery and bloodshed. But as Betrayal threatens to drown the court of fairy in violence, Jude will need to risk her life in, the, in a dangerous alliance to save her sisters and fairy itself. It's fantasy and I like fantasy and I like high risk. And I like anything that deals with the royal family because I don't know why. I really don't. One of Us. This has been described as a breakfast club meets Pretty Little Liars book. And I think The Breakfast Club is pretty cool. I watched for the first time a couple years ago. I was like, huh, okay, I see why this is a staple. But I love me some Pretty Little Liars. And so basically what happens is that, are they in detention? Or is it really that Breakfast Club? Um, yeah, they're in detention. And there's five of them? Yeah, they, there's five of them. And one of them ends up dead while they're in detention. And so the book is basically about finding out who killed the fifth kid. That's all I need to say. Comic book. Do, do, do. In my, I, was it my January book haul? I want to say I had Supergirl, um, volume one, which is Reign of the Cyborg Superman. And so this is the second one in that series of the DC Rebirth. Um, but yeah, I'm like partway through. I'm actually more than halfway through. It features Batgirl, which is pretty cool. Look at just look at these colors. Oh wait, no, I'm still a spoiler. That's a spoiler. Wait a minute, let's go. Let's go further. Look at those colors. Look at those colors. But yeah, I should probably finish that tonight, just so I can get out of the way. Next we have The Bells by Danielle Clayton. I should also mention that the wedding date in this book and also the when they call your terrorists are all written by black women so that's pretty cool as well but the bells is about this world where everyone is born gray and there's this select group of women who aren't gray and have a little color to their skin and they have the ability to make people beautiful and they all special in a certain thing and then i guess once people become beautiful i don't know if they stay gray they like all right, great. I don't know how that works. But there's this one woman, Camellia, who is a bell, but she wants to be like the highest of the bell 
bells and work in the royal court and it's about that and just how to manage that while also I like, guess keeping her connections with her bell sisters and look how thick that is like you can just literally immerse yourself in this world and I love that I'm also unsure if this is a standalone we're gonna see also can we just look at the inside what it's so pretty it's such a pretty book and like oh it's just white but that's pretty cool too the white and pink so yeah right here we have st um what is this the full title is journey to star wars the last jedi princess of alderaan and it's about princess leia which is super cool i started watching star wars because my boyfriend is literally obsessed and when they announced that they were coming out with episode seven what was that like a year and a half ago it came out when we were sophomores and i'm a senior now so literally like a year and a half ago he like lost his mind I was like, you gotta watch star wars. and so i binge watched star wars with him so that i could go see star wars with him and i actually have found myself enjoying it but i've wanted to read about the world and read the books that are out because i feel like i'll be able to better just connect with what's happening on screen plus it's easier for me to remember things that i read in books and like history and context rather than watching movies that's just something i know about myself so also princess leia is like amazing Duh. so yeah i'm excited to read this one as well all right so the last two books remember that trip to barnes and nobles i said i was going to do the last two books are Cress and Winter, I really hope these are in frame, by Marissa Meyer. And this is the third and fourth book of the Lunar Chronicles. Super thick, I love it. As you know, I have read um, Cinder and Scarlet, obviously. Those were in previous books and previous, like, one of my reading books, things like that. And I love, love, love the Lunar Chronicles. I've loved it ever since I was partway through with Cinder, I hadn't even finished the books and I hadn't even finished that book and I went and immediately bought Scarlet. And I don't know why, even though I love Scarlet, I don't know why I didn't buy Crest before I was done with Scarlet. And so I've kind of been like on a lag. And so I decided to solve that issue for the future and just buy <laughs> them both so that I don't have that weird moment where like I finished Crest and I don't have Winter because I know I love the series, I know I love her writing and I know that I'm gonna finish this one and wanna jump straight into this one, even though I hate finishing series because it's just like, it's a lot to finish the series. But yeah, those are all the books that I bought this February. 23 books, I believe. Let me actually recount that, it might be 24. Yeah, so 24 books. <laughs> I added um, a book last minute to my list, but 24 books. Let me know what you're reading. Let me know what you've bought this past month. I will be recording and putting out a January, February wrap up of all the books that I read those past two months. Stay tuned for more videos. Make sure you click like if you like this video. Make sure that you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so that you are notified when I release new content. Don't forget to share my videos and follow me on all of my social media. And yeah, bye. This is Finding Audrey by Sophie Kinsella. This was so good. This was so good. So basically it's about this girl who has um, social anxiety disorder, general anxiety disorder, and also depressive episodes. And 